Chris McCaskill, or Baldy to his friends, is ruled by love of family, friends, health, and photography. He's co-founder and owner, along with his son Don, of SmugMug, one of the top photo sharing and image hosting sites in the world. To say that Baldy has an unparalleled energy, love, and zest for life would be a vast understatement. In fact, keeping up with him takes an entire team of people. Perhaps it's facing death in the eye and saying no thanks that gives him his unrelenting positivity. He and I both share that life-changing event, and I can tell you that everything changes after staring down the Grim Reaper. Baldy has enough stories from his astounding life to fill several books, and I'll tell you, none of them are boring, and all drew him forward into a life that is inspiring, motivational, and a celebration of the human spirit. I'm Karen Hutton, and welcome to The Chat, where it's all about living your life as an artist, or better yet, living your life as if it were your art. I can think of no one who personifies this more than Chris McCaskill. Did I get the Karen Hutton hug? Yes, you do. Oh, so great. Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Wow, you got some cool. Yep. You got some cool new art here. Don't they look beautiful? Oh look my from God. behind. They're beautiful. Joe Azure over here. Joe CJ Azure. CJ Kale, Hawaii, the volcanoes. Oh man, they're killing it. And Salim for the Bay Bridge oh, with a Zeiss so lens printed 90 inches big. Holy One cow. shot with a D800, you <gasps> can print 90 inches and see every little rivet. That Amazing. is incredible. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, Look Lord is right. Look at this. <laughs> that Holy photo, cow. I think that's one of the greatest photos I've ever seen that's ever been taken of this amazing tree. You're not even paying attention to the heroes on the side because this tree I know, is I know. We've got the heroes here, but oh. I know. It's Whoa. just, it's just so amazing. So this wall is 150 inches high. I could print this four times the size because it's 38,000 pixels. Maybe the second largest tree in the world. How did he do it? Did, was it, I mean, because this is all like on the same, you know, like how did he it do It seems that? impossible. <clears throat> he said in his first 37 years, he always got the tree from the bottom looking up, you know right. how you do, or the top looking down. Right. You never get a portrait of a full tree because right. there's other trees around. Right. It seems impossible. So they called the Hollywood rigging company, rigged up cables, put three cameras on a platform and winched it all the way up, taking photos all oh along God. as they went. Absolutely amazing. They're just 16 millimeter lenses, so it's actually, the camera is much closer and can fit in right. between the other trees. That is fantastic. Oh my God. Incredible. Okay, well let's look at some other stuff. How about the floor? That's Central Park. Central Park, taken from a helicopter straight down. We found some flooring that has a 10 year industrial wear guarantee. That's and incredible. Now we're gonna make huge prints on the floor. I but, it, but if we keep distracting with people on the walls, they'll never notice the floor. I know, everybody's gonna be ah, oh, jaw dropping. <laughs> all right, all right, let's all right. go, let's check out the rest. Very cool. What about, whoa, look at this. Uh, Joe Azure, <gasps> Pier 7. That Joe Azure, man, he he's is amazing. something else. <clears throat> yeah, that's like the second shot of his we've put up around here. Is 93 this, inches. Is this, a, is this a D800 or is this a panorama? No, he, he shot it with his 5D Mark II, three of them. Three, like, like this yep. way? Mm -hmm. Like that way. Wow. But who else do you know has shot a uh -uh. Pier 7 that beautiful? Uh-uh. Yeah. No, go Joe. He's got the corner. Yeah. He's He owns San Francisco. <laughs> he really does. He does. So you're expanding. It looks like. Yeah, well, we've been hiring a lot of engineers, product managers, and designers mm -hmm. because <clears throat> we're getting more and more customers all the time, and they want features. Features. More beauty, more shopping cart, more products in the shopping cart, more social. Yeah. So. Well, and speaking of, let's see, which way is it? That way, we have, there was that incredible. Uh, big print. print. Big print. Florence, is let's that, go down this way. That's this way. I get all mixed up. New product manager, Pablo. Hi, Pablo. Hi, Hi there. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? Great. Thanks. Good. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. Guys, keep it up. Um, so you got here just in time. This print oh, just went up last week. Man. Uh, we need to put better lights on it. We're going to put track lights here to really butylize it. Uh, but Sean Reeder shot this uh, just a month ago when he was in Florence, Italy. Gee, and right. I just love this city, and it's such a fine shot. And, you know, did a pan of. We're really lucky because so I think this print is 160 inches. Wow. And, we're really lucky. We have the wall space to do really big yeah, prints. Yeah, no kidding. Make a statement. They yeah. really, really do. And people come up and they say, "Oh man, look at all the detail you can see in a big print. Yeah. You can't see in a small one." Photography's gotten so popular. There's so many millions of people coming out of the woodwork, you know, to join us. So we're getting. Oh, we must be past three billion photos now. Wow. 
And, That's a lot of storage. I know. It's a lot of storage. It's, we have RC like, Concepcion. This is an RC Concepcion print. Very large, very beautiful. lovely. But there's one over here that I want to have you tell us about because this is really stunning. Yeah, so my friend, he goes by Sub on Facebook, Salim, he, uh, he posted this on Facebook, it got a few likes. I really loved the potential of the photo. He had processed it kind of quickly, he loves to shoot, mm -hmm. he doesn't love to process. Mm -hmm. So I asked him for the raw files and myself and another um, woman here did a lot of the post-processing and it just came alive. He shot it, I don't know, six frames and three exposures per frame as a panorama. Man. And it has so much contrast between dark and light. Right. Uh, that, and it was shot with a cannon, it doesn't have a lot of dynamic range. So he, we were able to blend the three exposures, not to make it look like HDR per se, just to get the exposure light of Right, right. And boy, it's a stunning photo. It is incredible. Wow. Fantastic. All right, let's go, let's go uh, see some more. All right. I saw this coming in, and now, what, 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 what's going it's on It's crazy. Here? It's crazy. What yeah. is this? When I turned 40, my kids had a funeral procession for me with caskets on cars and everything else, and now that I've turned 60, they made me an old man corner. Oh my god. I got a pipe and slippers and a polar bear rug and hat rack and old phone and... And a pipe. With, what a is pipe. that in the pipe? That's kale What's at the kale? end of the pipe. Because I... <laughs> I, I've never smoked kale, but I eat it. You eat, eat a lot of it, yeah. Yeah, so do you. Yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, I blend it That's why in we're the so, Vitamix. That's why we're so youthful. We look 20-ish. Exactly. Ish. Well, I look 30-ish. Yeah. You look 20-ish. Thank you very much. <laughs>
did it for 10 years. I was vice president of engineering for a big company in Houston, a billion dollar company, Western Geophysical. And, and, uh, and uh, I, um, it's a hazardous occupation. So I got stuck in Columbia uh, with some hazardous travel we we're doing because you're out in the field in geophysics and helicopters oh. and on boats and in that. the North Sea and storms and all that kind of stuff. And I was in Colombia, and there was a general strike, and they were worried the guerrillas were going to take the city and all that. And I was behind bulletproof glass for 11 days. So I missed trick or treat, which is my kids' favorite holidays. And when I got back to Houston, where we lived, my family had a family caucus. My oldest son, Don, said, who was 12, said, Dad, why don't you go in the computer industry? Because that'd be so cool. You <laughs> work for Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs was his hero. He'd done a book report on Steve Jobs. What kid does a book report on Steve Jobs in seventh grade in Houston? They do presidents and sport heroes, not Steve yeah. Jobs. But he did. The book, The Journey is a Reward. So I tried to tell him, oh, mortgage on the home yeah. and career and all that. And they didn't understand no, that. And you, no, that's not kid talk. So for six months, I just bought these conference tapes from Comdex and so on. And mm -hmm. I listened to all the debates about whether OS2 was going to be the operating system that took over the world and so on. And I got so I could talk the talk enough to go in the computer industry, I thought. And we rented a home in Mountain View without a job, moved here in the center of Silicon Valley. From Houston to here? Yeah. And just picked up and moved? In a U-Haul truck. Wow. And when I got here, it was scary because I was writing up my resume and everybody would say, well, we don't hire geophysicists in the Silicon Valley. What are you thinking? But Steve Jobs what is, was really unusual and he would hire different kinds of people with different backgrounds. And I got a job at Next, at his wow. company, and worked doing the most amazing things with Steve so Jobs. So you worked directly with him? Directly with him, yeah. I didn't report directly to him. Um, I became director of developer relations, which he was really interested in, because it was like, how do you get Lotus to put their spreadsheet on our computers and WordPerfect and a whole bunch of new startups. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet everybody who was anybody in computing and go around with Steve. I uh, organized some of his keynote that he gave and sat there sweating and shaking in the audience, you know, thinking, what if it crashes, it's going to kill me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I have stories about that you just wouldn't believe. I, so. yeah, I've already heard a few of them and yeah. they are really hard to believe. Yeah. And you also, a little bit of trivia, had in your hand one of the very first two 5.6 modems. Yeah, uh, so funny thing is uh, Dennis Hayes was very famous in the days for, for inventing modems and the Hayes instruction set for modems. And Don, since he was, I don't know, six, you know, was running bulletin boards and things. He's just very interested in computers. It was the number one thing. So I always fed that habit because it was father-son bonding. And I'd buy him computers. He had a PC Junior for a while and then an IBM PC. This is and, your son you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And so I'd get him Only all these computer. modems. And he thought he had the fastest modem going at 28.8. And my first week at Next, Steve came running down the stairs with a man named Dennis Hayes. I was like, really? And I'm in charge. Or I was working in developer relations at the time. So I introduced myself and he said, well, I have the next generation of modem. It's a 56K. I had never heard of a 56K modem. You've got to be kidding me. So this is like major status points with my kid. So when I went home and he was bragging about his 28, you know, K modem, and I pulled out a 56K modem and said, Dennis Hayes, give me that. It's like, <laughs> major points. You want to talk about social credit. That's, that's like getting 20,000 likes on Facebook. That's, or that's like dad points, <laughs> which by the way, you have this whole thing about man points. Man points, yeah. Man points is big in your world. Oh, yeah. Well, I... I mean, not I, to change the subject quite so abruptly. And I yet, meant to I wear my t-shirt that says it has a cross and bone skull and cross and bones on it that uh, our head of human resources gave me. <laughs> says that's 100 man points on it. So I, I'm the ultimate judge of man points. I divvy them out to Michael Bonacore. I take them away from Michael Bonacore and the others around <laughs> us. He's like your, your crash test dummy, isn't he? Yeah. Kind so, of. for example, when he was filming us and he was holding my heavy video camera, <laughs> he, was, he was complaining that it was heavy. And I said, well... That would be minus 10 man points. Oh, so. my God. And then it's like plus, I don't know how many for those photographs you have of the guys jumping out of the... Oh, the base jumpers. Yeah, the base yeah, jumpers. They get a full 100 Full 100. Is 100 yeah. the max? Uh, you can go higher, but the problem is you also get deducted for stupidity points. Yes. And if you go too high, then the deductions, you know, cancel out. This is the out. point. This is the point. Well, what if you do something that's that's high in man points, like you do something wonderful for your wife or your girlfriend that's kind of kind of girly, but it's like serious, like boyfriend, husband points. Do you get man points for that? It depends. If it's too sappy, you might get 
Some you might get deducted. Yeah. So when do you get the most points if you're doing something with the girl? Uh, you get her to do something manly. You get uh, her to do something manly. Yeah, with so you. This is kind of manipulative, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. yeah. So you get man points <laughs> if she's going to go play Minecraft with you or something like that. Ah. Uh, but if you're just going to go to a candlelight dinner and smell car, you know, roses or something, I I don't know. If you, that's... you get deductions for that. But then what if she just loves you all the more? Well, see, that's that's the trade-off you got to make. Yeah. It's it's a hard world. So it balances out probably yeah. in the end. Okay. okay. It's like in figure skating, balancing off artistry versus athleticism. You know, as a figure skater, right? Who was a figure? I, I, you were. I, I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. Skater. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. In fact, uh, so the latest she's Olympics. A good skate? Remember, she's a good skate, Charlie Brown. Yeah. Three of us did all the skating. Wow. My name's in the credits. Amazing. Look I didn't that know up. that. Yes. I was just thinking of the recent you can Olympics touch me. where. That's okay. Wow. I'm touching a star. Man points for that. Wow. Okay. Well, oh, well, I will give you man points for really? figure skating. Really? Many, many. I never so. dreamed man points for figure skating. That I, <laughs> For I'm, women's figure skating. My mind is officially boggled. <laughs> I can't, can't help it. So, Baldy, what now? Now that, you've, now that you've just done so much, you've had near-death experiences, you've changed <laughs> your life, you've made big choices, you have this incredible family and this amazing business, now, and you just... <clears throat> Pass the big six zero. Just pass the big six zero. Oh my God. Love it. High five for that. <laughs> Man Love points. it. And you you just have this life force in you that just goes. It's I feed just... off Karen Hutton's life force. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds weird, but we'll, go, we'll we'll roll with that. What would be your answer now to the phrase? Wouldn't it be great if? You know, um, <clears throat> my life has become Smug Mug, and my family has become Smug Mug, and they're intertwined. My mm -hmm. whole family works for Smug Mug, and it's our love, it's our life, it's our passion and all that. And uh, it's just to see it rise like it's rising and see more and more people use it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Some people think it's just for pros, but we have uh, hundreds of thousands of consumers who use it just to keep their photos safe and beautiful. Uh, and we have a lot of pros who sell Smug Mug accounts to consumers. So they have pro accounts, which are quite different, mm -hmm. and consumer accounts. And I just dream of millions of consumers using it and loving it, millions of pros using it and loving it. And we're watching that dream unfold, and we're just pinching ourselves saying, you know, we're living where we love to live. We're doing what we love to do. We, it's bootstrapped. We never took any venture capital, so we own its destiny. It's just, it, I, I'm hoping I don't wake up. Someday <laughs> and find out it was all a dream. No, it's not so, a dream. You dreamed first and then this yeah, happened. Amazing. What would be the one thing that you would tell someone who wanted, had a big dream like that, that just really wanted to have it happen? I mean, at this point, do you have advice for the dreamers, the artists, the, the doers, the movers, the shakers out there? Yeah, I just think you have to do it. Uh, you know, there is a story. Um, when I worked for Steve, I would hear him speak to the press and so on. And I think, wow, he can change his persona to be so charismatic on stage or something. And then as soon as the lights would go off, uh, I'd see another side to him, which we all know about. Um, uh -huh. because he was so determined to invent and just a, a driven guy. So when he went to speak at Stanford University, my alma mater, as the commencement speaker, mm -hmm. I was thinking George Schultz is supposed to speak there or somebody like that, a president of the United States or something like that. Not Steve Jobs. He didn't graduate from college. Right. And I think he's going to make things up in that speech. So I, I couldn't watch it. But my son, Don, did watch it and made me watch it. And when Steve said, uh, in order to feel good about yourself, uh, you have to do great work. And in order to do great work, you have to do what you love. And therefore, your mission in life is to find what you love. It, it changed us. It helped us get inspired with Smug Mug, it just, it, it rocked our world. And he, I think he was speaking from the heart. He wasn't making that up. Yeah, no, I think he was too. That's fantastic. Okay, I have a part of the show where we do random questions. Okay. They're just quick little, sure. quick answer one-offs. What has inspired you lately? Um, you know, I think Smug Mug Films has inspired me lately. <gasps> me too. We hired uh, this cinematographer Anton Lorimer. He's amazing. He is amazing. You know, he was an engineer at Cisco. He's an electrical really? engineer. And he, speaking about changing your life, got a degree in electrical engineering, went and made routers as an electrical engineer for seven years and told his wife, you know, I really want to do something creative. And she got nervous. Uh -huh. And he went off and bought a used video camera on eBay 
and made a, a video of their family and did a nice job. And pretty soon he started getting jobs as a wedding videographer. And we could see his talent. It was just unbelievable mm -hmm. because of his passion. Mm -hmm. So we hired him, not clear on what he would do, but he just loves photographers. He loves their life. He loves profiling, telling their stories. So we've just turned him loose on the most interesting photographers. And every time I see one of his films, I'm so inspired. Me too. So. They're just amazing. They are truly amazing. What one thing do you wish you could do over? Oh, um, yeah, you know, uh, there are people in my life who rocked my world and changed my life. And I, to this day, you know, I can name them and I just want to go back and thank them and let them know what a difference it made. Mm -hmm. um, if they only knew, you know, where, uh, it's a long story I won't go into, but I was in juvenile hall once, thought I'd never get out when I was in, supposed to be in sixth grade. And I had this public defender, uh, silver-haired older guy, and he seemed to understand me and somehow found my parents. And I'd give anything to go back and talk to that guy, but I didn't think to do it as a youth. Right, so. you don't until later. One word to describe Chris McCaskill. Well, I hope passion is the word. <laughs> that's a good word. So that's that is the way so I'd true. like to be known. Yeah, thank you. So. Thank you so, Thank you. Thank so, you for so much for doing this. I Thank really you. appreciate it. And I hope you guys are just brimming with passion and just get out there and do it. I mean, that's the, that's the big thing. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks and for we will me. see you guys next time. Bye.